Hey guys, welcome back, and today we are going to be doing a two-round mock draft with trades. We did a two-rounder last week. I think we did a three-rounder last week, actually, now that I think about it. There were no trades involved. Today, we've got a number of trades, including a couple of big-name receivers that are going to be on the move in today's mock. But if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment and let me know which players you guys would like to see me talk about in the next video. Um, let me know which players you like, which picks you like. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, starting with the number one pick, the so Chicago Bears. I'm not going to overthink this. I think this is one of the easiest picks of the entire draft. The Bears are going to take Caleb Williams. I think that one is pretty much in pen now. He's one of the better quarterback prospects we have seen in quite some time. I think this is a move that makes quite a bit of sense for the Bears. They traded Justin Fields. We know they're going to go quarterback. I'm not going to overthink it. It's Caleb Williams. And number two, we got the Washington Commanders. Now, a lot of people go back and forth between Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and now you could even throw J.J. McCarthy in there. I don't think J.J. McCarthy is going to be in play here at number two, but I do think that it's between Jaden Daniels and Drake May for this Cliff Kingsbury offense. And if we talk about a perfect fit, it is Jaden Daniels, a guy who has some elite mobility, great ball placement, a really good arm. We're going to take Jaden Daniels here at number two to the Washington Commanders. That's a pick I've been doing for a little while now, and I think I think it just makes the most sense. And number three, this is where we're going to switch things up. The Patriots in the last mock we had trading with the Vikings, I'm going to have them stay put and take a quarterback, but I'm not going to have them go with Drake May. We're going to have J.J. McCarthy go at three to the New England Patriots. There were rumors that they were trying to trade up for Levis last year. Didn't really end up happening. McCarthy is a quarterback that is coming off an elite pro day. I think he's going to go extremely high in this draft. I think he's going to go ahead of Drake May, ultimately. Um, I think J.J. McCarthy, we know what happened the last time the Patriots drafted a Michigan quarterback. He ended up winning them six Super Bowls. So I'm not saying McCarthy is going to be that, but the upside with McCarthy is really, really high. I think teams are really going to love that about him. So I'm going to take him here at number three. At number four, we're going to have a trade. I think that the Vikings are going to come calling, trying to make a deal here with the Arizona Cardinals. So Minnesota is going to just offer both picks to Arizona for number four, including a future first as well. So it's going to be a major haul, and the Cardinals are going to accept that, and the Vikings are going to move up to select Drake May. I think the first four picks will be quarterbacks. We know that the Vikings are in the market trying to get one of these top quarterbacks. That's why they added a, another first-round pick in this draft. I think it's going to be a major haul to where the Vikings are going to try and get either J.J. McCarthy or Drake May, whichever one is on the board. And this mock ended up being Drake May. Great arm, fits the system really well. I really trust Kevin O'Connell to develop these quarterbacks. I think it's going to be really, really good for this team. They've got the offensive line in place. They've got weapons and Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, and TJ Hawkinson in place. I think this is perfect, and Minnesota is going to take Drake May at number four. At number five, we got the LA Chargers, and I think it's going to be Marvin Harrison Jr., best wide receiver prospect in this entire draft class. He's got the size over neighbors. I think the speed is a lot closer than we think. I think he's a better contested catch guy. I really like Marvin Harrison Jr., and in LA with – with uh, Justin Herbert, that immediately makes them one of the most elite wide receiver quarterback duos in all of football. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be an absolute stud. At number six, we got the New York Giants. I think this is where Malik Neighbors comes off the board. A guy who's got the speed. He's got the route running. I'm not as high on Malik Neighbors as some others are. I think there are some questions that I have about him, but Neighbors to the Giants is perfect. This team wants to build speed with Hyatt, with Wandale Robinson, and then you add Malik Neighbors in there. That's going to be a team that's going to be really hard to stop because they have so much speed on the outside. I absolutely love that for the Giants. At number seven, we got the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to take Joe Alt. I think this is a no-brainer for me. They've got the corner that they wanted in Legereus Sneed. They got the receiver that they needed in Calvin Ridley. I think they can wait on some of that. I think they can improve this offensive line, which is a must for this team. And I am going to take Joe Alt. 
to the Tennessee Titans. At number eight, we got the Atlanta Falcons. And I think this is going to be another trade with Romo Dunze still on the board. I think Arizona is going to try and come back up to make a move here. Now, I, I do think 11 is involved and 35 is involved. And I'm going to just throw in a future second, a future fifth. This is not the compensation. Don't pay attention. Just trying to get the deal to go get forced through where Romo Dunze can go to the Arizona Cardinals. This is a guy who has received some Larry Fitzgerald comps by some pretty big names in the media. Romo Dunze is my wide receiver too. He's got really good speed. He's a great route runner. He does a very good job of finding the football in the air. I think Odunze in Arizona would be an absolute home run for this team. And I'm going to make that call and make that move as the Cardinals are going to get their wide receiver one of the future. At number nine, we've got the Chicago Bears. I think this is going to be Dallas Turner. You get an upside edge guy that you can play on the opposite side of Montez Sweat, who's a pretty solid run defender and a good pass rusher. He's still raw, I think, but he's not like it's not like he's unproven. He was very good for Alabama. I think they're going to go get a guy that is going to continue to help this team down the road, and we are going to select Dallas Turner to the Chicago Bears. All right, so we had another trade here as the New Orleans Saints have traded up ahead of the Denver Broncos and the Atlanta Falcons. They didn't move really any picks that are going to be of any notoriety. They moved some future capital, but nothing crazy. And they've moved up four spots in this draft where they are going to select Jared Verse out of Florida State. I know they just signed Chase Young to a one-year deal, but this is a team that to edge rush has been very poor. They have not been very good at rushing the passer over the last few years. Cameron Jordan's getting up there in age. I don't think they're going to get one of the top edge rushers if they stay put. I think Verse is a guy that the Saints have their eye on. The Jets move back, add some more future draft capital, and they could still get a guy that they really want. I think the Jets are in a prime trade back spot, so we're going to have that happen at number 10. At number 11, the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock. I'm going to have them select Terry and Arnold out of Alabama. You pair him alongside A.J. Terrell and Jesse Bates. That secondary looks very, very good. This is a guy who's got slot, outside versatility. A lot of people CB1. He is my CB2, but I do like Terry and Arnold. I think he's got a lot of really high upside. And we're going to take him to the Falcons at number 11. At number 12, the Broncos are in a tough spot. I could see a team that wants to trade up. But I just feel like this is kind of the prospects that you expect to be on the board. Maybe you see a shocker come up in the next couple. But I think there's going to be a trade up. or I think they would like to trade back. I don't think there's anyone on the board here. So we're going to take best player available to me, and that is Quinion Mitchell. You pair him alongside Patrick Sertan. You've got one of the best cornerback tandems in the NFL. Quinion Mitchell has elite ball tracking ability. He's got great ball skills, great speed as well. He is my number one corner in this class. Denver has a lot of holes on their defense. It's not really a quarterback spot. I know I've seen Bo Nix here so many times, but I'm not going to do that today. I think Quinion Mitchell is going to be the pick for the Denver Broncos. At number 13, we've got the Raiders. We're going to take Olu Fashanu here out of Penn State. This guy is an elite upside tackle. He's got some of the highest upside of any offensive lineman in this class. Reminds me a lot of Andrew Thomas in similar terms of their size, their the way that they block. I think that they are going to be in desperate need to try and add some pieces to their offensive line. They lost a couple of guys here and there in free agency. I think he could be your starting left or your starting right tackle right away. And I'm going to take Olu Fushanu at 13. At number 14, we've got the New York Jets. It's going to be Brock Bowers. This seems to be everyone's favorite pick right now is taking Brock Bowers to the New York Jets, and it makes a lot of sense. I know Rodgers historically has not really had the greatest of tight ends. You look at Mercedes Lewis. You look at Robert Tunyon. Like None of these guys were great, but Brock Bowers is a guy that they could throw in this offense with Mike Williams, with Garrett, Garrett Wilson. And all of a sudden, this offense has – so many weapons with Bowers, Wilson, Williams, Brees Hall is in that offense still. The Jets are in a really, really good spot now with Brock Bowers, who is your threat in the middle of the field, who also provides some blocking for you as well. I absolutely love this for them. And uh, I think they did a good enough job of proving the offensive line. So we are going to take a tight end here that I think could be 
one of the better tight ends in the league immediately. At number 15, we got the Indianapolis Colts. If there's one thing that the Colts love to do, it is trade back. Chris Ballard loves to just acquire more draft capital every single year. And so that's what we are going to have happen yet again. The Los Angeles Rams are going to come calling, trying to jump up. Now they're going to give up 19, 52. We're going to give up like a second and a third next year. That is, again, don't pay attention. 52 is important in this deal. That one, actually, no, we're not going to give up 52. We're going to give up 83. Um, So something like this where the Rams are going to move up. And with the retirement of Aaron Donald, I think they need to improve the interior defensive line. Byron Murphy is everyone's favorite pick. Now you guys are probably like, well, why did the Rams trade up? The Seahawks have interior defensive line problems. The Jaguars have interior defensive line problems. And the Bengals have interior defensive line problems. They need to jump those three teams, I think, in order to go get their guy. Byron Murphy has elite pass rush upside from the interior of the defensive line. And I think that's exactly where what this team needs to replace. Yeah, he might be a little bit undersized, but I think he's got a lot of upside for this team. So we're going to take Byron Murphy here at number 15. They trade up, they give up a third rounder, and they move up to select their guy. At number 16, we've got the Seattle Seahawks, and this is going to be a pretty easy pick for me. It is Troy Fautanu out of Washington. Now, I know everyone's like, well, if they were going to take a tackle, why didn't they take Fulaga or Mims or Latham? Well, Fatanu has the length of a tackle, but he also can play guard. He's not as big as he looks, or he is bigger than he looks. He's got that interior versatility, which I think that Seattle really needs. You lost Damian Lewis. The interior of their offensive line is very thin right now. I think Fatanu comes in and can immediately be a starter on the interior or can start at tackle for you right away. I think that's what Seattle is looking for with their selection. At number 18, we've got the... Jacksonville Jaguars, and this is going to be Brian Thomas Jr. They they lost Calvin Ridley to everyone's surprise, and I think Gabe Davis can't be your wide receiver one. Christian Kirk, I think, can be, but he's not a wide receiver one. Go get some size and speed on the outside. I think that's what Brian Thomas Jr. is going to provide to to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got elite size. I believe he's around 6'3". He runs in the 4'3". He's exactly what Jacksonville is looking for in terms of a receiver. So I'm going to make that move here at number 17. And number 18, one of the tougher selections for me in this draft is this Bengals pick because they've improved the offensive line. I don't really think they need an edge rusher. The receivers on the board, they could look for, which we'll get to that in a little bit. I think they can wait on receiver though, because it's such a deep class. I am going to take a Marius Mims here, even though, T. Higgins is going to get traded later in this mock. They could look receiver without question, but I think the idea of Amarius Mims is very, very interesting. 6'7", right tackle. You got Trent Brown, I know. You didn't sign him to a super long deal. They love these big freak tackles, and Mims has some elite upside. This is a guy who you could sit for a year or two behind Trent Brown, let him learn, and then you give Mims the starting job down the line. I think that is the brilliant move for the Cincinnati team that has been struggling on the offensive line. You've got now a replacement option down the road. You've got some depth on that offensive line. So I'm going to take Nims here at 18. At number 19, we've got the Colts on the clock after trading back. This is going to be a receiver. And it's going to be Adonai Mitchell out of Texas, a guy who a lot of people have compared to CeeDee Lamb in this class. He is 6'4", has great speed, really good downfield separation. And that's what the Colts need. They need a guy who can take the top off the defense, and that's what he can do. Pittman's got size. Pierce has got size. But Pierce and Pittman aren't the separators that Adonai Mitchell is. Adonai Mitchell is a perfect fit. I know people have said Xavier Worthy to the Colts. I, I hate that pick. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense for what the Colts offense wants. I think Adonai Mitchell, though, at number 19, is the perfect receiver for Indianapolis. And I'm going to take him here at 19. At number 20, we've got a major trade incoming. This is going to be a deal where the Steelers are going to be trading the number 20 pick to the San Francisco 49ers. And it's just going to be 20, and we're going to get back. Um, and we're going to get back a seventh in 2025. This is a deal where Brandon Ayuk has been traded 
to the Pittsburgh Steelers. It looks like Ayuk is unhappy in San Francisco. Cap-wise, I think this makes more sense for the Niners to just let him go. You don't really have a lot of money to be handing him, especially with a Brock Purdy contract extension coming up. I think you could just see in some of the cryptic social media tweets that Brandon Ayuk has had, he is going to want out of San Francisco. I think it's going to happen. The Steelers are the most logical landing spot. And they're going to take, with their first of two firsts now, uh, they're going to take Talise Fuaga. Yes, I know they just signed Colton McKivitz to an extension. I think Fuaga could play right guard for you if you really wanted him to. But you've got one of the most unbelievable, nasty run blockers on the right side now with Trent Williams on the left side. And now he gets to learn from one of the best to ever do it at the left tackle position. This is a home run for the San Francisco 49ers. And you still got another first coming up. So I absolutely love this if I am a Niners fan. At number 21, we've got the Miami Dolphins. We're going to take Jackson Powers Johnson. The interior of this offensive line is about as bad as you could hope. Um, they've got to upgrade. Powers Johnson is the best center in this class. He's got guard versatility. No, don't overthink it. It's Jackson Powers Johnson. At number 23, or 22, excuse me, we're going to have another trade back here where the uh, Philadelphia Eagles are going to trade this pick with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they're just going to have them. It's going to be a third rounder, but we're not going to throw it in here. It would be number 89 here, but I know the deal is not going to get accepted. We're just going to swap firsts here, and the the uh, Bucks are going to move up for Latu Latu. My favorite edge rusher in this class, the injuries are a concern, but in two years at UCLA, didn't really struggle with the injuries. With the departure of Jack Barrett, I think they're going to need a long-term solution off the edge. You got Yaya Diaby last year, who was really solid. Latu has a chance to be one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. He's got some elite bend, some elite pass rush upside moves, plays that outside linebacker position in the 3-4 that Todd Bowles likes to run. I think Latu is a perfect fit in Tampa Bay, and that's going to be my selection here. At number 23, I'm I'm actually think I'm going to go a different direction than I initially went in my notes. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. We're gonna take Kool Aid McKinstry here. McKinstry had a pretty solid pro day. I know he's got the surgery coming up on his foot, but I think people are sleeping on Kool Aid McKinstry. He's still right up there with Terry and Arnold, in my opinion. He's got good speed. He's got really good ball skills. He reacts really quickly. He's fluid as a mover. And for a Cardinals team that defensively has some concerns, I think they're going to need to improve. So I'm going to take Kool-Aid McKinstry here at number 23 with the pick that I got from the from the Minnesota Vikings. At number 24, this is where we're going to see J.C. Latham come off the board. I know this is a lot lower than a lot of people would have him, but I'm not the highest on J.C. Latham. And a Cowboys team that now's offensive line we knew was a strength for a long time, now I think they're desperately in need to improve it. He is more of that right tackle prototype, but I think he has the athleticism to move up into the second level as a left tackle. So I I like this move for them. I'm going to take J.C. Latham to Dallas and just improve this offensive line the best that I can. At number 25, we've got the Dallas, or the Green Bay Packers. It's Cooper DeGene. I'm not overthinking this. This has been my pick for a long time. Corner, safety, hybrid, you can really put him wherever you want to, and I'm fine with that. I think he has some elite upside at both. Is my number one safety. He would be like my number four corner. He is an elite defensive player, a joker, a jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife. He's it all. I love Cooper DeGene, and I think he's exactly what Green Bay is looking for. And number 26, this is a really, really tough pick for me. I could see them going a number of different directions here, but I am going to ultimately go. With a corner here. I know, I know, I, I already can see the comments. He's going to be the sixth string corner on the Eagles. Yeah, that's not true. Uh, it's going to be Nate Wiggins. Um, Nate Wiggins is still on the board here at 26. Was one of the top three corners for me for a majority of the season. The combine numbers are a little concerning. I know he ran really well, but the Eagles need corner. He could play in the nickel, but I think he could play on the outside. Obviously, 173 is really small. He's going to need to bulk up. But Bradbury was a liability. Kaylee Ringo, you can't bet the house on a third-round pick here. 
you got Darius Slay, who's not a long-term solution either. I just named three corners there. I'm not trusting them. They have to they have to address corner early and often. And Nate Wiggins is the guy for me. At number 27, it's Jerzon Newton. It's got to be Jerzon Newton here. The interior defensive line for the Cardinals has been absolutely atrocious. Go get, in my opinion, the best interior defensive lineman in this entire draft class. Elite run defender, elite pass rusher, excellent athlete. I'm going to take Jerzon Newton here at number 27. At number 28, we've got the Buffalo Bills, and this is going to be Keon Coleman. I think they need some more size on the outside, especially after the departure of Gabe Davis. So I think Coleman here is exactly what they want. I think he provides that versatility for you. Um, he's got really good speed, good play speed. Don't pay attention to the 40 time. Good hands, great contested catch guy. Who knows what happens to Stephon Diggs, but I do like him quite a bit here to the Buffalo Bills, Keon Coleman. At number 29, we are going to see yet another trade here as the Carolina Panthers are going to move up into the first round. You see who's on the board, and now with the Niners in desperate need of a receiver, I think that the Panthers are, they cannot stay put. They're going to give up 33. They're going to give up like 101 in this deal to try and move up, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to pay too much attention to it. They're going to move up and take Xavier Worthy. I think this guy is perfect for them. He is your slot speed option now. You've got Deontay Johnson. You've got Jonathan Mingo. You've got Adam Thielen. And now you've got Xavier Worthy, who is a much different type of receiver than what they need. He creates separation. That is what the Panthers need in a receiver. They need a guy who knows how to get open. Xavier Worthy knows how to get open. You pair that with Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, Mingo on screens. Things are starting to look pretty good for this Carolina receiving room. I, I really like this Panthers team moving forward. At number 30, we've got the, the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to select Tyler Guyton here out of Oklahoma. With the departure of Morgan Moses, it has looked for quite some time that the Ravens were kind of a fan of some of the offensive linemen in this class. He is the next right tackle of the future for this team. He's got really good athleticism. He's got really high upside. Yeah, he's still learning the position a little bit, but I think the upside with him is really, really strong. And I'm going to take him here at number 30. At number 31, we've got the Niners who are back on the clock. They are in the receiver market without a question now. And I'm going to take Lad McConkey. Yeah, he's not, he, excuse me, he's not the most physically imposing wide receiver in the world. But this is a guy who gets open. He's fast. He runs really well. And for a Niners team, I think that's what they're looking for. They're just looking for guys that are going to play hard every single snap. And I think that is exactly what Lad McConkey is going to do for this team. And then at number 32, we've got the. Kansas City Chiefs back on the clock, and I, I was I messed up my notes a little bit, but I do think they're going to be in the receiver market here. A bunch of different guys that they could look into. Ricky Parasol, I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of Troy Franklin, but I just don't know if any of these guys are first-rounders. We are going to go with a tackle here. We're going to take Jordan Morgan out of Arizona to round out the first round. He could play left tackle, could play right tackle, could play guard. He's played almost everywhere. I think this is a really good situation for the Chiefs. At number 33, to start the second round, we're going to take Darius Robinson out of Missouri to the Detroit Lions. I think they are in the market for kind of a guy who's got some defensive versatility. I love what this team has done on the defensive line. I still think an edge in a 4-3 could be really, really valuable for this team. I think Darius Robinson can provide that for this Lions team on the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson. You've got James Houston as your rotational pass rusher. You've got DJ Reader and Aleem McNeil on the front. This defense is all of a sudden looking scary good. I absolutely love this. And they've got another second coming up later. At number 34, this is going to be another trade. T. Higgins is out the door here, um, and we are going to have the Patriots trade number 34 in exchange for T. Higgins. Now you pair J.J. McCarthy with a true number one receiver um, in T. Higgins. They're going to be able to pay him a lot of money, and they're going to give up number 34 
and it's just going to be like a sixth rounder next year just so we can get this deal forced through. Cincinnati's on the clock, and now they're obviously in the receiver market. I'm not going with anybody that you guys are expecting me to go with. I'm going to go with a guy that I am really, really liking, and it is Ricky Parasol out of Florida. Look, Parasol has really, really, really good hands. He catches everything thrown his way. He ha- didn't run a very ex- expansive route tree with Florida, but this is a guy that we know can route run. He, we know that he is a fluid athlete, tested incredibly well at the combine. That's what Cincinnati needs. Can play in the slot, can play on the outside, can play everywhere. I'm taking him here at 34. I think this is the perfect replacement for T. Higgins, in all honesty. At number 35, we've got the Atlanta Falcons back on the clock. And I'm going to take an edge rusher here. This is a team that runs a 3-4. I think they're looking for that 3-4 edge. And to me, Marshawn Nealand might be the most perfect fit for this defense. I made this pick a couple weeks ago. You pair him with Grady Jarrett on that inside, you absolutely love it. I think this is an absolute home run for the Falcons to come away with Terry and Arnold and Marshawn Nealand. At number 36, we've got the Washington Commanders, and this is going to be a pretty easy pick for me. This is going to be um, Chop Robinson. It's got to be Chop Robinson. The upside is too high with him. The The pass rush upside is tremendous. I don't think he's a first-round guy. I think he's still raw. His arms are short. But a Washington team that I think has done a pretty good job, this is a really interesting spot. We saw Dan Quinn get the most out of Micah Parsons. I think he can get the most out of another elite Penn State edge rusher. And we're going to take Chop Robinson here at 36. At 37, we are going to select Graham Barton out of Duke to the to the Chargers. Can run that interior offensive line for you seamlessly. That's a no-brainer for me. I absolutely love that for them. At number 38, we've got the Tennessee Titans. And I'm going to go with Tyler Newbin. This is a team that has improved their defense quite a bit. Chidobe Awuzie has been an awesome addition. Legereus Sneed. Really good one. Now I think they got to go get a long-term safety. Tyler Newbin is the number one true safety in this class, I would say. I like DeJean, but obviously with the versatility, I don't know if he's a true safety. He could play that strong safety position, really good at reading the quarterback's eyes. That's exactly what Tennessee needs. Can be your Kevin Byard replacement. I'm going to take Newbin here to Tennessee. At number 39, we've got the Carolina Panthers on the clock. Very interesting here where they're going to go. I initially, I had Jordan Morgan still on the board here, so that's where I went with them. But obviously, he's not on the board anymore. We are going to select Christian Haynes out of UConn. The interior of their offensive line has gotten a lot better. But I still think you can continue to add pieces. You picked up Robert Hunt. Now you got Christian Haynes, Ika McQuanu, Taylor Moten. Everything's starting to kind of come together for this team. Zach Frazier probably could have made a little bit of sense there as well, considering center is a need for this team. I I wish I could go back and change it now because I think Zach Frazier makes a little bit more sense. So what we're going to do, we're going to say this is Zach Frazier at number 39, and then we'll take Zach Frazier to where we have Christian Haynes. That's where we're going to go with this. At number 40, we've got the, the Washington Commanders, and with him still on the board, I don't think... I had he didn't have him on my board in my notes initially here. Ennis Rakestraw is going to be the pick here. You pair him alongside Emmanuel Forbes, who was up and down as a rookie, was not super consistent, but I really liked this for them. You get an edge rusher, you, you get a corner. Now everyone's like, did you even watch the Commanders last year and see how they needed to improve their offensive line? Yeah, but it's a deep offensive line class. Relax, they'll get an offensive lineman here probably in round three. At number 41, this is an easy pick for me, and I, it's actually going to be back-to-back pretty simple ones. Tavondre Sweat off the board to Green Bay, and then we are going to select another defensive tackle to the Houston Texans, and that is going to be Braden Fisk. I think that is a, exactly the kind of guy that D'Amico Ryans is going to just absolutely love to have. For the Packers, you get one of the biggest guys in this entire draft class. He's going to be an excellent run stopper for you immediately. and then. For the um, for the Texans, you get a guy that's got really good pass rush upside. So I really like that. Now, initially here, I'm trying to go back here. So, yes, 
This pick, I had a swap with the Arizona Cardinals initially. So we got a the car, the Falcons are not going to be able to get and keep their second rounder from that deal we did earlier. So we're just going to have Atlanta send this pick to Arizona. And this is going to be Christian Haynes. So we're going to take Zach Frazier here. But Christian Haynes, this is a team that the interior of their offensive line, not really the strongest. But I think you can add a piece. Christian Haynes, yeah, he didn't play against the greatest competition in the world. But this is a really good athlete, moves extremely well. So we're just going to send 43, and we're going to get back a fifth in just something like this, just so this deal goes there. Bang. And then we are going to have Arizona select Zach Frazier, who is going to be Christian Haynes. So, okay, now we've got that confusion out of the way. And Christian Haynes is headed to Arizona. And then we've got Zach Frazier headed to Carolina. At number 44, with the quarterback still on the board here, I don't see how the Raiders pass on Bo Nix. Bo Nix can move. He's got a good arm. He's accurate. He's everything that this team needs in a quarterback. I'm not overthinking it. At number 45, I think that with Kingsley Suomatea still here on the board for the for the um, Saint, I think that's a no-brainer for them. I'm going to take Kingsley Suomatea right here at number 45. At number 46, we're going to go with the corner for the Colts. They, a lot of people thought that this team was going to be getting Lajarius Sneed. Didn't end up happening, but I think that they could still get a really solid corner here. Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia is a lot of people's pick, but I think Ballard is going to absolutely love Max Melton out of Rutgers. He's a guy that moves really well, has, can play in the slot, can play on the outside, and the Raz score is going to be the deterring factor for him. He's going to absolutely love that, and I, I think that that's going to be a really, really good addition for the Colts secondary that needs some help in the cornerback room. At number 47, we've got the New York Giants. We're going to see the first running back come off the board here, and Trey Benson is, in my opinion, the unanimous RB1. He can run. He's got the one of the best long speeds in this class. Has a 4-3-3, I believe is his 40 time. Ran extremely well. He's a powerful runner, smart. You love that. And to replace Saquon Barkley, I think they're going to have to do that. So they're improving the skill positions here with Malik Neighbors and Trey Benson, which I really like for them. And number 48, I don't think that we expected him to still be on the board at this point. Um, we are going to select Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia. the They made some moves in the secondary. They cut some guys. I think corners a need for Jacksonville. And we saw what happened the last time they took a, a Georgia corner. Tyson Campbell has been awesome. I think Kamari Lasseter is very similar. I think he can develop into a real, real stud in the NFL. At number 49, the Bengals still, they get their pick because they traded the T. Higgins one away. They've got Mims. They've now got Ricky Parasol, and now we're going to improve the defense just a little bit. We're going to get a defensive tackle for this team, and that is going to be Chris Jenkins out of the University of Michigan. He's on the board here. Good athlete, run, ran really well, but a really good run stopper. They need to be able to replace DJ Reader. I think Chris Jenkins allows them to do that pretty easily. At number 50, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles who we took Nate Wiggins to them earlier. So now you're looking, I think linebacker is going to be the position of need for this team. We're going to go with the first linebacker off the board. No, it is not going to be Edger and Cooper. It is going to be Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson is the perfect middle linebacker for this team. He can play outside linebacker in a 4-3, but the Eagles obviously going to a 3-4 under Vic Fangio. I think they need that middle linebacker. Yeah, you got N'Kobe Dean there. I think that you can make some moves here. Um, and I, I like this idea. So we're going to go with Peyton Wilson here, play him at the middle linebacker position because it was a disaster. He can cover, he can tackle. That's what this team needs. At number 51, we've got the LA Rams and look, they, they haven't really, or no, we've got the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. I thought the Rams were on the clock here. That's, I think you look at the board here. I think offensive line is where the Steelers would love to go. I think they would love to go with a tackle. Um, but I just don't know if Patrick Paul is the right option here. I'm going to take Patrick Paul, though. I think he has some potential there. 
as a run blocker, it is a disaster. But as a pass blocker, he's very, very good. So we're going to bank on the upside of him because he can move well. He's a solid athlete. He's got great size. We're going to take a chance here on Patrick Paul at 51. At 52, we got the LA Rams. It's going to be Michael Penix Jr. I don't, I don't see him getting outside of the second round. Great ball placement, and you're learning from one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it. I think this could be Stafford's last year in the NFL. So they get a long-term replacement there. Um, I like Michael Penix Jr. quite a bit. I do know, I know that they made a move. I'm trying to think of, they traded for a quarterback, but it's not moving me like that. I, I think that the Rams are going to take Michael Penix Jr. At number 53, the Eagles are back on the clock yet again. And I am going to go with Cooper Beebe out of Kansas State. A guy who can play tackle, can play guard, can really play all over your defense for you. I think or all over your offensive line. We know the Eagles like to keep a strength to strength. I think BB is an incredible player that nobody is given the love that he deserves. We're going to take Cooper BB here at number 53. At number 54, we've got the uh, Cleveland Browns. And we are going to select a defensive tackle yet again off the board. And it's going to be Mason Smith out of LSU. Now, I'm not the highest on Mason Smith, but I do think he goes in the second round simply due to his athletic upside. And Ruka Roro is the same thing. Uh, For the Dolphins, they lost Christian Wilkins. They desperately need to improve their interior defensive line. Ruka Roro is a guy that is moving up boards. It looks like there's really no shot that he gets outside of the second round. Not going to overthink it. I think he's a good player. I think he fits what a huge need for the Miami Dolphins. At number 56, we've got the Cowboys back on the clock. They're going to take Edger and Cooper. Um, A lot of people have him as linebacker one. I like Peyton Wilson just a little bit more, but this team needs a linebacker. The unfortunate retirement of Leighton Vander Esch has left this team with a hole at the linebacker position, so we're going to take him there. At number 57, we are going to select... I don't think he was supposed to be this far, but the upside is too high here with TJ Tampa to continue to fall. The Bucks desperately need some cornerback help. TJ Tampa in Tampa would be awesome. He's got size. He's a really, really zone, good zone corner. You get him with Jamel Dean and Antoine Winfield. I think he could develop into a nice piece there. I think the upside is very high with TJ Tampa. At number... 58, we've got the Green Bay Packers. We are going to go with an interior offensive lineman here. And that is going to be Dominic Pooney out of Kansas. Can play tackle, can play guard, can play center. You can put him at all five positions on the offensive line. He's going to thrive. I think that's the type of player that Green Bay absolutely loves and is absolutely going to fall in love with. I'm not going to overthink it here. At number 59, we've got the Houston Texans. We're going to go with a receiver here, and it's going to be Troy Franklin. Um, Yeah, he's not the most physical receiver in the world, but he's got size, and he can take the top off the defense. You got Tank Dell. You got Nico Collins. Now you add Troy Franklin. I really like this receiver core for Houston and how it's coming along. I think Franklin is an awesome player who is going to continue to be a really solid piece at the next level. So Buffalo, with their first pick, took Keon Coleman. Now I think they're going to go with a corner. Um, I think that, you know, you lost Tredavious White. They've lost a lot at the safety department as well. I love Renardo Green. Renardo Green, we talked about they just lost some stuff at the safety. Renardo Green could be that safety replacement for this team long term. But I think he also has some cornerback versatility. Yeah, you got questions about the ball skills here and there. But I think he's an excellent player. And I really love the value here at number 60. At number 61, we got the Detroit Lions. Now, another team, they took Darius Robinson earlier. And you love that. I think this team is also in the cornerback market. Mike Zamer still still on the board. One of the best nickels in this entire draft class. You add him to with Carlton Davis. Obviously, Cam Sutton has been released. So there are some question marks about that, but... I think Sanders still will be a really good fit here with Detroit and keep they've they've had luck drafting Michigan defenders in the past. I'm going to I'm going to do that again. The the uh Ravens are on the clock here. I think this is another receiver spot. They ended up going with I believe where did we have them go earlier? We had this team go with Tyler Guyton earlier. 
I think receiver is where we want to address now. Xavier Leggett still on the board. Easy pick for me. He's got the size. He's got the speed. Really good hands. Good contested catch guy. I don't think he'll be this far down the board in the real draft, but I do love the value here at 62. At 63, We've got the Niners on the clock yet again. They took Lad McConkey. They took Talise Fuwaga. Why not just continue to address this team's defense a little bit more and keep that defense a strong unit? I, I'm, I think I'm going to go with an edge rusher because I think the edge rush, there are some question marks about it. And I like Chris Braswell quite a bit here. I think this is awesome value. He's got great length. He's physical. He's physical. He's a great pass rusher. I believe he had 13 sacks for Alabama this past season. You pair him alongside Nick Bosa. I really love that. And then at number 64, I think we're going to see a, I believe we had this team go, we did have this team go Jordan Morgan in the back end of the first. Receiver, yet again, is going to be the move. And where they want to go here is a bit of a question mark. But with the value of Jalen Polk still being on the board, I think Jalen Polk is going to be the final pick of this two round mock draft. That's going to do it for me in this video, guys. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let me know which picks you guys agreed with, which picks you disagreed with. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.